Hi, this is It's Gonna Be Okay, and I'm Dr. Roseanne. And today we're going to be talking about what is pans and pandas? Could infections and toxins be affecting your child's mental health, their behavior, their learning, their attention? Because guess what? It's on the rise. <music> Let's start with what is pans and pandas? And you know, you may have heard of it. You may think you know what it is. You may think it's impossible that your child has it. And I don't think everybody has it. I just see, you know, a lot of people who have infection affecting their brain and toxins because we can't forget infections and toxins. And let's get into that. Let's find out. So, Pans and pandas, they are two separate clinical disorders, and we're going to go into what the acronym stands for, but at the heart of it is a misdirected immune response, an infection, a toxin comes in, the body starts trying to get rid of this, you know, infection or toxin, and it attacks itself, and that causes a tremendous amount of inflammation in the brain and the body and triggers neuropsychiatric, neurocognitive symptoms. And they have a lot of things in common, but ultimately pans and pandas has a sudden onset. They're caused by different things. We're going to go into that. And autoimmune encephalopathy is part of this, but what happens is doesn't have a sudden onset. So we have pans and pandas and we have autoimmune encephalopathy and they can share many of the same symptoms, have different sources, but pans and pandas is a sudden onset or a huge acceleration of a pre-existing condition, which I want to get into because I feel like we don't talk enough about it. So what is pandas? What does it stand for? Panda stands for pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorders associated with streptococcal. So PANDAS is exclusively triggered by the strep infection, okay? And people can have strep triggers and multiple things, and then they become PANS because they have multiple triggers. We're going to go into that. But there must be in pandas, what we have to have is OCD or a tick disorder. It also is a childhood onset where in pans it's not. It's going to make sense. And there's got to be that sudden onset of problems, right? So that's what makes it different. And I want to say to you that if you suspect your child has a mental health problem, know that a sudden onset of a mental health issue is not normal. Okay. So it also doesn't mean they necessarily have, you know, uh, you know, psychosis or whatnot, even though infections can cause that. And I, and obviously I always do see that as a major factor because that's a big part of the population that I work with. So let's talk about what is PANS, how it's different than PANDAS. So I've alluded to some of the differences. And one of the big differences is that is that PANS has multiple infection triggers and toxin triggers. It also can be an adult onset. So in PANDAS has a different set of criteria. And PANS stands for Pediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric Syndrome. I know, I just said <laughs> it can be an adult onset. The name hasn't been, hasn't changed. But a lot of cases can fall into this because once you have one infection, particularly strep, um, in, in strep being PAN does, many other infections can come in. And if your PANS, one of the common sources we're going to talk about it is tick-borne infection. And these infections uh, can really break down the system, whether it's COVID or Epstein-Barr or tick-borne illness, PANS can have many, many triggers. So you still have an abrupt sudden onset, but it's this time it's OCD, severely restricted food intake, and then have at least two other of these seven categories. So emotional liability or depression, irritability, behavioral issues, um, deterioration or regression of school performance. I've seen kids all of a sudden lose their ability to read. 
we're not talking about dyslexics, um, and sensory motor abnormalities. I talk a lot about a case I had with somebody I work with who was an elderly patient who came to me and he had really spent his whole life trying to figure out what was going on with him. And he was an advanced student. He was living in Cape Cod. He was an advanced student going into first grade. So this long ago, he was already red flagged as a gifted student, if you can imagine. And he got sick in the summertime. And that summer between kindergarten and first grade, he, by the middle of first grade, he was identified as a special ed student and lost the ability to read. And so he really struggled his whole life. Then he finally figured out it was Lyme disease. And when he came to me, he said, you know, I'm somewhere around 80% better except for anxiety and I want to get better. And we did neurofeedback and he, and he was able to completely eliminate his anxiety. But I said, you literally had a sudden onset. You were a pans with a Lyme trigger. Actually, he had multiple tick-borne infections. But it was so fascinating to see that, you know, even back then we were seeing it, but it, it was going on and we don't know what it is. And still it goes on and we don't know what it is. And we'll talk more about it. So symptoms can't be explained by another uh, neurologic or medical disorder, including lupus, Tourette's and all these other. And again, there's no age of onset in pants. This is big deal people, because this can affect adults as well. And we need to get the word out there not to you know confuse people. So what are some associated symptoms? right? So your child, a lot of times we look back in the history, there are symptoms that are there that might make sense. And a lot of times we we call these soft symptoms, even though some of these may be uh, more pronounced. So separation anxiety can be there. I hear this quite a bit. My own child, I want to talk next about my own journey, had like serious separation anxiety, like had to be peeled off of me. It was traumatic. You might have generalized anxiety. You might also have panic. I mean, the anxiety runs the gamut between internalizers and externalizers. Um, and you can see a lot. You might have abnormal motor activity from hyperactivity to strange movements to restlessness, sensory issues. I almost never not see sensory issues in pans and pandas, which is why we added it to our COM PMF because we wanted to address and support sensory issues, concentration difficulties, that loss of academics, particularly in math and visual spatial. Um, when you have PANS and there's tick-borne illnesses, oh man, those little tickies, they love to get into certain things. Um, and the visual pathways is one of those areas that it likes to disrupt. You might have increased urinary frequency, or even just a brand new onset of bedwetting, which wasn't there before. We might have um, irritability uh, with aggression. We might have um, just an overall disruption and then that regression that we talked about. And I would say that when I think about some of those associated behaviors, let's talk about some of the top ones that we actually see. So now remember, just because your per your child doesn't have tics and OCD does not mean they don't have this, right? And they are very common. Almost exclusively all of our OCD people have pants and pandas, but that's because, you know, this is my jam and people fly in all over the world to get support on that. And there's not many people that get that. But you'll see what I mentioned, some of that separation anxiety, mood, anger. I feel that what becomes the most crippling component of pans and pandas is the OCD, the rage, and school refusal. Not that the other issues aren't really severe, but those tend to be the most chaotic and disruptive for the child, the adult, um, and their family members. that Those tend to be the three biggest issues that are really difficult to move on from. Because let's say, face it, when your kid's angry, telling you to off, F off, punching holes in walls, um, feels like they're just so out of control that it's like you need to call in you know, your priest for an exorcism. Um, it's kind of hard to ignore that. Right. And then the OCD just shuts people down. And it also just, holy cow, hijacks a family. It doesn't mean, and that and the, all of these issues, anxiety, attention problems, learning and problem, they tend to lead to school refusal, which, you know, I'm seeing more and more and more. And if you haven't seen my school refusal um, 
series, either watch it on YouTube or listening to the show, I urge you to go back. I have lots of practical tips. At any given moment, at least 50% of my population deals with school refusal. So other issues you can see are like a spontaneous onset of focus problems. I remember one of the girls that I was working with, she didn't have any history of ADHD. And then all of a sudden she developed ADHD. When you have a sudden onset of a focus problem, remember any sudden onset is abnormal. We need to look at why. Why is that happening? Could infections and toxins be a part of it? Yes. Um, could uh, bullying be a part of that? Yes. Could a terrible teacher be a part of that? Yes. The whole point is dig deeper. Don't just assume that it's ADD. Um, word retrieval is a major issue for a lot of my people with pans, pandas, Lyme, sleep problems, either sleeping too much or having insomnia. I, I can't even tell you how many cases I've had where the, the pans get so severe that somebody is only awake an hour a day. I mean, it, it just happens. And, you know, you got to meet everyone where you're at and you have to start really, really, really small with that person. How are we going to move past that? One, you always got to calm that nervous system. We're going to talk about that. But you have to figure out what can we do to support the nervous system in healing itself. Um, and, and in this series, we're going to talk about that. I already talked about sensory processing. I al you also can have head pain and headaches. Um, food restrictions on their own because of sensory problems, ARFID, um, also because of OCD and contamination worries can lead to eating disorders and they can be very common. And we talked about frequent urination. And so when we are talking about pans and pandas, you, there is a whole complement of, of symptoms and, and issues. And most people don't come to me um, with already knowing. So I can't say their name, but they weren't my clients, but um, a well-known celebrity, their child has pans and pandas and they frequently talked about it. So they called me and their father was like, couldn't believe that people don't properly treat pans and pandas. And I was like, what world are you living in? And what happened with his child is she had a sudden onset. It was really obvious. He told me the date, you know, when you know the date, when somebody writes down on um, March 6th, you know, um, 2015, she became a different person. That's probably pans or pandas people. Um, and so he said, I knew instantly and the neighbor down the street was a doctor and said, sudden onset, I know this kid, this has got to be pandas. Um, and it was. And so we wish it was that easy to identify. So when your child is treatment resistant, when there are multiple diagnoses, when you have things like separation anxiety and it wasn't there before or frequent urination or loss of skills, including handwriting, not just math, you got to start thinking, could there be a medical source? Could there be an infection, a toxin? Yes. So we should be using a rule out of pans and pandas as a standard. But absolutely, if your child has a sudden onset, or a big acceleration of a pre-existing problem. Any of those problems that we talked about and a big worsening or having anxiety and then it flips to OCD overnight without not really making a lot of sense. Not that OCD makes sense. You really want to explore that. So this is the first part in a five-part series about pans and pandas. Please, if you are not in our Facebook group, Join it, drrosanne.com forward slash group. We're here to support you, answer questions. You need a tribe. We can. You're going to hear my next story about being abandoned by what I thought was my tribe. And if you're one of those people who just wants to work with us, you can take our, our solution match or go to drrosanne.com forward slash forward slash help. Um, and you can, you can see that it's a process of giving you the right solution for where you're at. And some people want to work one-on-one -on -one with us. And that is why somebody flies in every week with pans and pandas looking for support on just how to reverse those symptoms 
But this is the first part in understanding what it is so you have some accurate information. If you love and care about anybody that has a sudden onset or a worsening of problems, please share this information with them because it can be life-changing.